Hello everybody, welcome back to another reading. Today we're taking a look at a case that was requested by two people separately. And it is the case of Dennis Martin, who was six years old on the 14th of June of 1969 when he went missing. Now he, his father and his older brother had gone to Spence Field, which is apparently in the greater Smoky Mountains area uh, along the Appalachian Trail uh, for a Father's Day outing. And while they were there, they encountered another Martin family. It was Carter Martin with his two sons. And the four kids decided to play together. At some point, the children decided that they were going to play hide and seek. They were going to hide from the adults. And then when the adults would come looking, they would jump out from behind a uh, bunch of trees and then surprise them. And they told uh, Dennis to go and look for a tree that was further down the trail because they worried that the red shirt that he was wearing would attract attention. So that's what Dennis did, and by the time that it was time to jump out from behind the trees, all the kids did so, except for Dennis. And initially they thought that maybe he hadn't heard them, so they called out to him like, Dennis, it's time to uh, jump out, where are you? And he actually didn't respond, they went looking and found that he was nowhere to be found. Uh, the grandfather went up to the ranger station, which was about a nine mile hike, which is quite a distance. And uh, only then were the rangers able to come down and help look. Uh, they didn't have a shortage of people wanting to help look though, because after a while the entire area was swarmed with people trying to find Dennis. And later I believe people who were involved with the search, or at least evaluated the search afterwards, said that there's definitely a maximum number of people that you want on a search because there were so many people walking around, uh, trampling each other's trails, and uh, effectively unknowingly perhaps destroying evidence that it was just not helpful. But in any case, they did not find Dennis at that point. Around the same time that he was reported missing, there was a Keyes family about an hour away from where they were. And they reported, at least according to some people, they reported seeing either a bear or a very hairy man sitting in the bushes. And they heard a scream. And the, the father said that actually the hairy man uh, was walking away and they had something red slung across their shoulder. Now, according to uh, Mr. Keyes himself, who was later interviewed, I believe in 2016, so that's very late down the line, still he was very sharp in his 90s, he recalled actually not having seen a wild man or having described seeing a wild man, but rather describing a man who was already there at the forest by the time that their family had arrived. Upon arrival, they had seen a dirty white car parked along the same trail as where they were about to go into the forest. And as they went into the forest, they saw this man who looked very disheveled and dirty and looked like he was sweating profusely, also appeared to be very nervous, and they hurried off to the white car and then sped off in said white car. That is what Mr. Keeve reported to the FBI sometime later when he found that there was indeed a boy missing in roughly the same area because he thought that was an interesting thing that they might want to know. Now, somehow, the uh, whole hairy man with something red slung across the shoulder came into existence, and the reference to a wild man came into existence. This may be something that a reporter did, because the reporter is also the person who told Bill Martin, who is the father, of the fact that this report had been made in the first place, and Bill Martin got upset with the FBI for not telling him that because that sounded like maybe some wild man was walking around with his son. So if you were to follow, you would definitely want to know that. The FBI, however, said that it didn't seem relevant to the case because the occurrence had been about an hour away from where Dennis was last seen. And the reported, uh, they reported the child missing around 4.30 and the uh, estimated time of seeing this wild man with the red thing slung across the shoulder and the scream was about between 4 and 5, so probably roughly around 4.30 as well. So they figured that there was no way they were going to be able to be in two places at the same time within that span of time. So perhaps that was not the best sighting or clue to the case, we don't know. Either way, other things that happened, we had a uh, trail guide who was fairly experienced called Dwight MacArthur, who uh, found, or at least was down the West Prong area, and he smelled something that smelled like death, and he reported it, and the person on the other end, the supervisor, was like, oh, don't worry about that, it's probably just a dead crow, I think we saw that, don't worry about investigating it any further. 
which we thought was really strange because obviously a crow doesn't smell as a dead person or a larger animal that is decaying. I don't believe they actually had a visual of what was decaying, so there's really nothing like, like there as in the way of evidence, but it is strange that they didn't ask him to investigate it any further. Another person who reported something was an illegal ginseng harvester who uh, found remains in the 70s, and he found bones that he thought belonged to a child in the big hollow area. He took a while to report this, and it was many years later by the time he reported this, because of course he was doing something illegal, and it was very heavily frowned upon, so that's why he did not want to report that he was there, because he may have gotten in trouble, is that that's what he thought. And so by the time he went to look for it, they couldn't find anything because the area was covered in uh, decaying leaves, so they weren't able to find anything then either. And of course it wouldn't be complete if we didn't mention the Green Berets who also showed up to search. Uh, a lot of people find them uh, to be very mysterious in the way that they showed up with their guns and they didn't want to cooperate with any other search parties going on out there. Uh, I've seen a picture of them walking around. They do not appear to be carrying rifles or anything like that. As a matter of fact, looking at the picture that I saw, they didn't have any guns on them. That doesn't mean that they didn't have anything on them. But I can imagine that they have their own methods of searching and that perhaps they may have had a sidearm somewhere that was just not immediately visible. I don't know. Either way, they did not involve themselves with most regular search parties. And as far as I could tell, they didn't find anything conclusive either. So we don't really have anything on Dennis right now other than the fact that he just disappeared. And there's been a lot of perhaps wild goose chases based on evidence uh, that may or may not be completely accurate. Um, we therefore don't really know what happened to Dennis, so we're going to try uh, using the tarot for that to try and get some hints as to what may have happened. We are starting off with a deck that's currently already on the table, which is called the Wise Dog Tarot. And we're going to use the Crow Tarot as a follow-up deck. Now, both of these are made by MJ Cullinane, so if you like this art style, make sure to check them out. There's a name right there. They make very nice decks. Anyway, so um, as per usual, I'm just going to start shuffling the cards. And as soon as something pops out and I have a screen full of cards, we're going to stop and take a look. So without much further ado, let's get started. Okay, let's take a look what we've got here. We've got the Three of Swords, we've got the Nine of Cups and the Lovers, all three of them in reverse. Let's grab them. Now, normally the Three of Swords is like Three is a Charm, uh, or rather there may be somebody extra in a relationship or something along those lines. Uh, it's in reverse. And it seems, if you can look at the cards as well, that there's like a connection between these hearts over here and the clock in the background and the fact that this looks like a fairly old dog. First thing that I uh, got, like the impression was perhaps that it's time to let go of this case because it has been since 1969 that it's out there. This may be a message in general like, okay guys, I think it's time to let this case rest. This may be perhaps directed at the family as well. Like maybe they're still trying to find something if there's still people out there. Uh, looking perhaps the brother is still out there looking because they were only a few years older and they would still be around I'm sure um, provided nothing happened to them of course uh, so yeah this may be a reference to that we do see here the nine of cups in reverse which is definitely being uh, not happy emotionally so this may uh, be the same type of message or perhaps 
saying this is reason why you need to let go because it's really not good for your heart it's not good for your emotions uh, this person or is um or somebody at the very least is still hanging out the hope maybe or still very much affected by this event which of course is no small event if you lose a child or a sibling or something like that but maybe these cards are saying perhaps it's time to let go. We have the lovers in reverse, which is definitely also, again, more heart imagery. The heart's been hurt, the heart's been broken, and there appears to be a stream of water coming down from the top of the bird there. I don't know if you guys can see, there's a blue streak there. Let me turn it around. Like the dove is crying onto the heart. So very strange. I didn't see that before. It's a very small detail, but still. So oh, maybe this first this set over here is more to more people in general. Like, okay, uh, there's been a great loss. Uh, there's nothing much we can do about it right now. It may be best to move on because some people may be stuck in some type of mindset or stuck with their heart somewhere, unable to let something go, even though they probably should because there's not much uh, left that can be done, I feel. So that's the first three cards of our reading. All right, we have Judgment over there. Next to the Fool and the Five of Wands, I believe. So let me grab these three. So Judgment next to the Fool kind of strikes me as almost a natural progression of events in the sense of the fool wandered off and got himself into trouble. I am drawn to look at the snake at their feet. As you can see right there, the uh, snake hasn't quite bitten them yet, but the dog is just kind of running around doing whatever, chasing this butterfly over there. Maybe he did get distracted is what I'm thinking now. He got distracted while he was out there. I mean, he was already further away from the other children, which I think were probably a little bit older, at least by a few years. So a six-year-old is very easy to distract. I think that these cards, at least, are trying to say that they uh, just followed their six-year-old um, imagination into trouble and judgment came and claimed them because of that more heart imagery by the way and also the butterfly is here oh this is a very strong one look he's chasing the butterfly and that exact butterfly is here so he chased the butterfly and that led into an untimely end it looks as though we have the five of wands here which is normally like a struggle uh, maybe an internal struggle here or maybe they struggled very briefly i feel like there is a little bit of fire there so perhaps it was a brief struggle uh, that led to a judgment day for him, which of course is very sad, but I think it does point towards it not having been a very drawn out end. Let's go look at the second row here. We have the Knight of Swords, we have the Seven of Swords, and we have the Ten of Swords. And uh, these two are reversed, and the Ten of Swords is upright, so it does look as though he charged ahead and uh, got into trouble. Now, Swords is normally about thoughts and also words. Often when there is a missing persons case and I'm doing a reading on them, uh, we'll see the Knight of Swords as something they may have heard that led them off in the wrong direction or something along those lines. Like maybe they heard something about certain types of plants, maybe they heard something about certain types of trees, certain types of animals. Maybe they heard a story about somebody finding something cool under a rock or whatever and they think they see something similar to that and then their imagination tells them that that is something they need to chase after. And I think we're looking at something similar to that as well because it turned out to have been a lie or at the very least not something that they were expecting because the Seven of Swords is often about deceit and I think in this case since it's upside down I feel like this means that it was not an external person that deceived them but rather incorrect thoughts about things, perhaps their imagination uh, deceiving them, uh, leading them to trouble. And then we have the Ten of Swords here, which is definitely a very dark card. Well, darkness for the dawn, usually. But they're in trouble, basically. The dog itself is also crying and thinking about the past where they had somebody to take care of them. It could be that there was a moment where they were like, where is my mom or where is my dad? Where's my brother who could help me out right now? I'm all alone here. I'm in trouble. I'm gonna need somebody here. To save me but it doesn't look like somebody's coming that's what this card is trying to say to us i think we see next a reversed page of pentacles 
which is uh, perhaps a resource that they thought they could use, which turned out not to be so. We have the Seven of Wands here, somebody coming for the position, and then the Moon, which is a hidden secret or something. So we have a child out there who is lost and alone and confused. They see something that they think will help them, which is page of pentacles and the pentacle is reflected in the dog's eye. Now, initially when I saw this card pop out, I thought it was actually a dog that had like a cataract or something, or cataracts would be word, sorry, uh, that looked as though he had a blind eye, but actually he's focused on this one resource. So perhaps he thought, oh, this is something I need. Like this might be them walking around the forest thinking, uh, oh, those bushes, those berries, I think I can eat those. I'm hungry, I'm gonna eat those. This is great that I found them, that type of thing. But that was challenged only uh, moments later with the Seven of Wands, which is always somebody coming for your position. And the moon showing that something is hidden. So perhaps they found something that was not quite what it seemed. And it only really led them to more trouble. So this is definitely also sounding very similar in a sense to the uh, Atadero case that I did the other day, which was also a small child getting lost in an unknown area. Let's see what the Crow Tarot has to say about all this. So he's currently lost and found that he's gotten himself into trouble through his imagination. He's gotten something that he thinks will help him, but it turns out not to be what he thought it was. And then there is the moon. Oh, there's a card on the floor. The card on the floor is the fool. But this time it's upright. So this time uh, they were definitely trying to trust the universe or trying to get some type of advantage by trusting their guts, I think, trusting their instinct, because they do appear to be looking at the forest. So maybe this is the part where they were like, you know what? I think I know this place. I'm just gonna walk this way because I'm pretty sure this is the right way to go. Like a very childlike innocent way of thinking that the path you found is the one that you need because you think you recognize something. In any case, trusting that you'll get somewhere by like going on these tangents, literally. Then we have the Three of Cups. So that may be that he actually found something good there while he was out there. Like some type of harmonious thing. He may have felt really good out there out in the wild. He may have been very adventurous at heart and he may have enjoyed the scenery. Perhaps I'm pretty sure it can be very pretty and beautiful. There may even have been some fantasies there about potentially living there. If he can't find his way back, you know how children tend to have all sorts of plans and ideas about how easy it is to live out in the woods, etc. Until of course reality comes a knocking. This is the Knight of Pentacles. All right, so he may have tried to save some of the things that he found because the Knight of Pentacles is very practical. So this does indeed sound like he tried to make the best of his situation in some way, shape or form by trying to be practical, perhaps trying to build himself a little fort maybe or eating things. It could be that earlier he found something that he thought was good and he ate that and he got sick. And then he was like, okay, I'm not going to do that anymore, but I'll just stick to this bit that I found. All right, we got this one and we got this one. This is Nine of Swords again. So we are once again off on a wild goose chase, similar to the Nine of Swords over here. We have the same energy right there. And again, the Seven of Swords. So he tried a second time to... Um, find his way, uh, find things to eat, find places to shelter, thinking that he knew how that worked and then finding that indeed that was not the case. So for a second time, his youthful enthusiasm was not rewarded with success. What can we find after that? Oops, that's too much. I'm gonna have to shuffle that separately. It's like eight or nine cards. We can't do all of them. All right, let's see what we can get from this little stack. Anybody? This one. 
than that one. Okay. This one is death in reverse. This is an unwillingness to let go. Could be staving off death as well because it is a reverse. We have the king of cups here. So this may be... There is quite a puddle underneath the cup of the king of cups. King of cups is normally somebody who's very good like with their emotions, very uh, strongly connected to their emotions as well. May also have good control over their emotions, but the puddle underneath the cup suggests to me that uh, maybe they were fairly emotional in a negative sense while trying to be okay, or maybe perhaps deceiving themselves in a way. Oh, and that one's also on the floor. There we go. Alright, so we have the Ten of Wands in reverse. So that is a Tired of Struggling card. I'll get the card on the floor in a moment, but this one definitely points towards being tired. And I think maybe uh, at this point he was starting to give up even though he was letting his emotions go fully with his King of Cups energy. He was not able to see through the darkness until the dawn. I'm going to grab the card on the floor. King of Pentacles in reverse on the floor. So King of Pentacles, you can see that there's apples there at the bottom. Uh, this basically means that even though he was letting his emotions go uh, and basically just letting him do whatever they wanted, uh, he also realized that he had uh, nothing to go on because the King of Pentacles does not have the resources that it is shown on the card if it's in reverse. So he definitely noticed that he was lacking, severely lacking. And perhaps just noticing that all the things that he thought that he knew that he could do to save himself and find his way back turned out useless. This one in any case, but there's a bunch over here. Oh, again, the Ten of Swords. We saw that one earlier as well. So he went into, I think, uh, what we could call another depressive state. Perhaps just, oh, and again, the Three of Swords, but this time it's upright. And I think this might be them missing all the people that were not there for him. Crow flying away in the background as well. It's like um, perhaps feeling a stabbing in their heart, like uh, emotional stabbing in his heart, not physical stabbing, but just like feeling very much alone in the world, which of course he was because I don't think anybody found him. Uh, yeah, normally this card is a bit more of a betrayal, like there's somebody, a third person in a relationship, but in this case it feels a lot more like abandonment. Like he just misses the people that he was supposed to be with who were not able to find him. Okay, let's see if we can get a few more cards here at the end. We're going back to the Wise Dawn Tarot. Oh, there we go. Wheel of Fortune. Oh, it appears to all be made of bones. Of course, this is a dog deck, but uh, this may point towards the fact that he may still be found, although perhaps uh, just bones now. Because it has, of course, been 53 years since then. So, yeah, if they do find anything, it'll just be bones now. Um, I did ask if we were going to find him, so that makes me look at the bones on the wheel. The wheel tends to point towards things changing, like you don't have a whole lot of luck, and then suddenly there is a breakthrough. That's what this one appears to be pointing towards. Can we see anything else about potentially finding? And perhaps we'll find somebody uh, who may be at least partially responsible. So far the cards aren't really talking about a second person, but... Are we going to find anything at all? Because the wheels might be turning. But that doesn't have to mean that he will be found. I don't know if we're going to get any cards. Any final cards? this one. The sun. 
All right, so we're looking at happiness over here, or at least you're supposed to be looking at happiness. The, the, the tall dog there, I think that's an Irish hound or something. In any case, I'm drawn to look at the butterfly once again, which we started off with at the very first row that we had. Multiple cards with butterflies and the happy dog there on the bottom right. Maybe perhaps trying to cheer up the old gray dog. This really reminds me of the message that we got at the very start to perhaps let go of the sadness surrounding this event. And I'm really getting the impression that maybe we should instead focus on uh, all the good things perhaps in life, all the good things that they brought as well, uh, all the good things that this has caused. Like I said, one of the things was that they now realize that you should only have a certain amount of people searching to help future searches uh, go more smoothly, something like that. I think that we should look at the silver lining is what this card is trying to say. Look at the sun, look at the sunflowers, follow the butterflies and th remember me fondly, something along those lines it seems is what this card is trying to say. So that is what I'm seeing for Dennis Martin. I hope you found that interesting. In any case, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a like and a comment, or just a comment if you don't want to leave a like, that's fine as well. Uh, also, make sure to also put new cases in the Google Forms that is linked in the description below, so I can do more cases based off of that. I hope to see you in another video. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye for now.